So a little bit about me. I feel like Jamar already stated great, great fun facts about me. Um, but here's a little more in depth about me. And guys, I'm just going to hide my screen if it's all right, just because I'm not seeing my full screen and it's kind of throwing me off. Thumbs up if that's okay. Thumbs up. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, Okay, cool. Um, I am a professional resume writer. Um, I am also, as Jamar stated, I am a full-time senior accountant. I'm sorry, I'm not a senior accountant. I actually recently was promoted. I am the accounting manager at LaSalle University. It's a small private school here in Philadelphia that holds about 2,000 or so students. Um, we have a freshman to senior class as well as an MBA program. Um, I was born and raised in Philadelphia. Of Pennsylvania. I do have a bachelor's degree in accounting as well as recently obtained master's degree in business administration with a concentration in finance. I've been writing resumes um, for a little over four years. Um, my company name is Ashley's Resume Service and I would provide you, if you want to follow me on Instagram, um, I would provide you with that contact information following this presentation today. Uh, I had, I've had my business license for over three years. So I am certified in the state uh, of Pennsylvania. Um, I've created, as Jamar stated, um, and updated over 800 plus resumes. I've personally helped 90% of my clients obtain long-term financially stable careers. And like I said in my intro, this is not just to continue on with the workshop and you guys never hear from me again. You know, I literally, as I would do with you, with my clients, they get the resume. I help them throughout the full process leading up to obtaining that career-oriented job that they're truly looking for. Uh, more than 50% of my clients are making up to 75% more at their new jobs due to their resume. So just example, I came from um, a prior employment uh, in which I was the senior accountant, but I wasn't that happy where I was. So how I kind of started Ashley's resume service four years ago, I wasn't happy and something said, let me, let me change my resume. You know, even though I was making that top dollar, I had that, you know, corner office. I worked alongside the CFO, the CEO, um, and even the controller in our field. I still just wasn't happy. Something about being there just didn't fit for me. So I said, let me update my resume. I updated my resume. Um, and I mean, it, the, the amount of options, career options came after updating my resume, was just insane. I had almost five notable job offers within the time frame I updated my resume. And literally, it was probably like a three to five month turnaround. Um, I ended up obviously going with LaSalle University, in which I received almost a 40% salary increase of where I was um, to where I am now. And then being at LaSalle for nearly three years would be this August. I received three promotions in that three years just due to my hard work, you know, my insane work ethic. Um, being in sports, I know you guys, you guys are team oriented probably. You have that strong work ethic. So, you know, if you put your best foot forward, whether it's in high school or going into your career, the opportunities will be endless. Um, the money is out there to be made, whether you come from, uh, you know, a, a well um, foundation as far as like a home, two parent household. I came from a single parent household. So don't let anything deter you from being where you want to be in life. And guys, I apologize. I can't see you again. I had my screen hidden. I'm just going to toggle back just to see if anyone's maybe in the waiting room. Um, in the waiting room. Yeah. I think Elijah Gordon, where you are, was he already here, Jamar? If you can just jump on and speak to that. I don't know if he's being kicked off or something's going on. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, because I know oh, he's, yeah, he's, he's already on. I think his screen was just off. Oh, okay, okay. Because, okay, cool, 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 cool. Okay. All right, I'm just going to hide that screen. Bear with me, guys. Um, all right, so I'll go to my next screen. So I guess if you guys can take your um, mics off mute, I just definitely just wanted to get some small input. Um, and I apologize, before we go into this, let's do a round of introduction, because I don't know you guys. You know me, but I don't know you. Um, and that is actually on my agenda. So if we can just... 
Yeah. What did you sign me up for? It's only four questions, Gio. Please take the information you need it. That's a different story, nothing. I'm stop sharing my screen, and I guess if we can go from top to bottom, maybe starting with Gio and just going across. If you guys can state your name, the year you are in high school or wherever you are in life kind of talk to that and then also just give me like a fun fact about yourself my fun fact is i am a resume writer i am account i, I am accounting um professional but if you can, can just tell me what's your fun fact whether it's sports oriented whether it's a hobby you can go from there just with a brief round of introductions geo if you want to start uh, are you my name is Gio. Are you on mute? Um, and I'm a junior. And, um, fun fact. Um, a fun fact. I play football. Okay. Okay. Now I don't want to hear all football. Let's let's go outside of the box. Gio, he earned football. That's his thing. That's he's he's owning. But if everyone else can say something else, that would be very appreciative. Jayton, I think you're next. Were there like set questions I'm supposed to answer other than introducing myself? No, I know it's like okay. Yeah. My name's Jaden. Mm -hmm. Uh and my hobbies are like playing video games and okay. sometimes making them. Okay. What year are you in high school? I am a junior. Okay, cool. Cool. Isaiah, I think you're next. Um uh, my name is Isaiah Smith. Um, hobby, hobby that I really like is I like running track. And okay. a fun fact is I'm going to be attending Cuyamacama College okay. to, uh, to keep running track. So I'm guessing you're a senior. Uh, no, I already graduated. Already oh, graduated. You graduated. I'm, going to, this, cool. I'm going to be a freshman in um, college. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, is it Nava? Nava? Yeah, my name is Federico. I'm a freshman in high school. And a uh, fun fact about me is that uh, I was born in Mexico, I guess. Okay. Carlo, oh wait, Carlo, we left Carlo. Um, I'm not sure who says iPhone next to Jamar, if you guys are seeing the same thing. Yeah. yeah that's me. Okay. Uh, my name is Abraham. Uh, you said I had to list hobbies, or sorry, whatever hobbies. year you are in high school, and then your hobby or fun fact. I'm a, I'm a junior, and fun fact, I did sports in schools. Okay. Yeah. Is it Angelia? I think you're still on mute. Um, my name is Angelia. I'm a junior, and something I've been liking to do is cook. Cook? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Mr. Murray, is that you? I think you're next. My name is Tavari, and my one fun fact is like, I like to work out, and one of my hobbies is for my injury. Okay. What year are you in school? Uh, I'm finna go to the eighth grade. Okay, eighth grade. Awesome. <laughs> Carlo, I think you're back. You want to go? Are oh, you on mute? Uh, my name is Carlo. I'm in 10th grade. And something, a fun fact is I like to go um, mountain biking. Okay, awesome. Elijah, I know you were jumping in and out. Are you still there with us? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, uh, we can hear you, just if you could speak a little louder. All right. Um, uh, my name's Elijah. I'm in ninth grade. Okay. And the fun fact is I play basketball. Okay, awesome. And Brittany Bryant, so that's my brother and my sister. Um, they're in Illinois and then as well as Philadelphia. I don't know if you guys want to jump on, feel free. Um, okay, I think we're cool with that so i'm just going to start guys thank you for the introduction it's a pleasure to meet you all virtually um and hopefully you again like what i present today okay i'm going to share my screen okay 
Okay. Okay. Guys, as I mentioned before, if you can just take your mics off mute, I can't see who's talking. So if you just want to state your name and just tell me what does this picture mean to you? It looks like Carlo wants to talk. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's like just like your life overall, like what you're going to um, encounter. Okay. 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 Anybody else want to kind of give their input on it? Jamar, feel free. You can jump in. You know, this is for everyone. Okay, no one else? Guys, uh, this is be interactive. <laughs> this is everything you put on a resume. Okay, yeah, that's a good that's a good feedback. All right. Anyone else? Anyone else wanna give their input? I know it's early. That's what a person has. Uh it's what represents you. Okay, yeah, that's good feedback. Anybody else? All right, it's fine if it's no one else. I just really wanted us to just start thinking. Um, again, I come from an accounting background. Analytically, just to wake you up again, I know Jamar started off with the jumping jacks, but just to kind of get everyone's viewpoint on this. There's no right or wrong answer, so I wasn't really looking for, oh, that was a good answer or that was, that was wrong. Um, but it's kind of like with maybe Carlo, what everyone said. Um, these are some of the things that makes up who you are your education, your language barriers, your ability, uh, your race, your age, your sex, your income. Um, all of these essentially is what outlines a resume. Uh, not per se income, but you know, based on how great your resume is, the income will speak for itself. Um, your language, where you come from. It's always great to um, be bilingual. That's just an additional asset that you can have. And we'll go through all those steps whether it's here today or whether it's through follow-up emails and questions that you may have for me when you are um, putting together your own resume. But this is really just to get you guys thinking outside the box um, and just to start us off for today. So again, me just always wanted to get the ball rolling. It's one o'clock here on my end in Philadelphia, but I know it's early for you guys. So this is this video that I'm going to show today, it's one of my favorite videos. I think a lot of you guys can relate to it just being in the sports back. Um, being in high school and then also just coming from different um, fields of life whether it's a parent household two parent household uh, so not really looking for feedback on this video but just to get the ball rolling before I go into everything hey line up line up everybody line up we're about to race everybody line up Shoulder to shoulder, take off your backpacks. Backpack. Guys, can you see this video? No. 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 Okay, okay. Give me one second. I apologize. Let me. Uh, resume sharing. Hey, line up. Line up. Everybody, line up. We're about I still can't see it. Okay, bring your share window to the front. You have to share a different window, like Google okay. Chrome, whatever okay. it's on. Who's that? Thank you for the help. <laughs> All right, give me one second. I think I needed to have like a technical person here with me. Hey, line up! Line up. All right, let me just new share a new share. That's what we need. Okay. All right, let me let me know if you guys can see it now. Uh, you change it to your desktop. Okay, how about now? Yes. yes. We're good? Thumbs yes. up? I can't see your thumbs up, but I, I, I'm i hopefully... Yeah, no. Yes. We're um, thumbs up. Thank you for your feedback. We're about to race. Everybody line up. Shoulder to shoulder. Take off your backpacks. Basketball, line up. We're about to race. Hey, we are we are racing for a hundred dollar bill. The winner of this race will take this a hundred dollar bill. 
Before I say go, I'm going to make a couple statements. If those statements apply to you, I want you to take two steps forward. If those statements don't apply to you, I want you to stay right where you're at. Take two steps forward if both of your parents are still married. Take two steps forward if you grew up with a father figure in the home. Take two steps forward if you had access to a private education. Take two steps forward if you had access to a free tutor growing up. Take two steps forward if you've never had to worry about your cell phone being shut off. Take two steps forward if you never had to help mom or dad with the bills. Take two steps forward if it wasn't because of your athletic ability, you don't have to pay for college. Take two steps forward if you never wanted where your next meal was going to come from. I want you guys up here in the front just to turn around and look. Every statement I've made has nothing to do with anything any of you have done. Has nothing to do with decisions you've made. Everything I've said has nothing to do with what you've done. We all know these people over here have a better opportunity to win this hundred dollars. Does that mean these people back here can't race? No. We would be foolish to not realize we've been given more opportunity. We don't want to recognize that we've been given a head start. But the reality is we have. Now, there's no excuse. They still got to run their race. You still got to run your race. But whoever wins this $100, I think it would be extremely foolish of you not to utilize that and learn more about somebody else's story. Because the reality is, if this was a fair race and everybody was back on that line, I guarantee you some of these black dudes would smoke all of you. And it's only because you have this big of a head start that you're possibly going to win this race called life. That is a picture of life, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing you've done has put you in the lead that you're in right now. When I say go, on your mark, get set, go. If you didn't learn anything from this activity, you're a fool. All right, guys, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to begin today with that video just to show you that um, although we all come from different walks of life, whether you guys are in California, I'm in Philadelphia, um, some of the opportunities that we have will differ. Um, as we go through the presentation today, I want you to really start to realize that your resume is your background. Um, it's going to outline your skills, your education, so that a, a potential employer is quickly and easily able to um, review you as an individual. Uh, a, a key word that they used or phrase that they used in that video was that, I want to say today is your opportunity. Today is your head start at life with this workshop um, to start you off with your resume. Because um, at the end of the day, you still have to run your own race, and that's what he um he said that in the video, we all have that race to run. So hopefully this will kick off a great opportunity for your summer, for you to begin your, um, whether it's 
I don't know, summer program or anything. Hopefully you guys take a lot from today and really uh, focus on the importance of what I am sharing with you. So the resume and its purpose. A resume is a short descriptive document. It's a marketing tool, as I stated. It's a first impression. It's a way to stand out from other applicants. It's an, it's an account of work experience, education, qualifications, objectives, personal qualities, and just special skills. Um, it's usually the first items a potential employer sees about you, and therefore, it is very important. Um, and obviously, the, the resume is the foundation that's going to help you get the job that you want. The importance of a resume. On average, um, an employer spends about six seconds looking at a resume. So you want to consider that, wow, six seconds. Is that true or is she really telling the truth? No, it's legit. If you were to Google um, what's the average time frame that an employer um, reviews a resume, it's going to say six seconds. Um, some employers use computer programs to review resumes as well. Considering you know, when I probably had my accounting position. You know, it's so many different people in Philadelphia who probably were also applying for that same job. You consider maybe 50 to 100 applicants went for that same position. So it's like, wow, is an employer really looking at 50 to 100 resumes per, per job? No, not really. Um, so this is the next point. Many companies use what it's called. It's an applicant tracking system. And we will discuss this in later slides. Um, but this is something that maybe every job is using at this point. Um, so the importance of a resume. You say, why is a resume important? Um, it should be brief, <coughs> concise. Given that the employer is only spending about roughly six seconds looking at an individual resume, um, it should be brief. It shouldn't be two to three pages. Um, you don't want to overwhelm an employer with so much detail in which they kind of lose insight on who you are. Well, Ashley said she's done this, she's done that, but who is she? You know, that's what they want to know. Who is she? What can she bring to the table? Why does she stand out from a Jamar? or Carlos, or Brittany. You know, what can she provide us? Why would she be an asset to our company? Uh, a resume also should be well organized. They don't want a, a resume that, you know, has 16 font here and then something is bold and underlined here. It should be organized. Um, it should be easy to read. It should be accurate. That's one thing that's crucial um, that we will go through as well that Although you guys are in high school and I heard some some are in eighth grade, some are a freshman, uh, it should be accurate. Don't feel like because you don't have a lot to maybe put on your resume right now that you need to add more than what you, you know, are really doing or capable of. You know, if I'm in the 10th grade and I don't have that much professional experience, then I feel like, wow, who really wants to hire me? But it really boils down to what else can you bring to the table? We already know you're in high school, so we're not really looking for you to have that traditional five to 10 years of experience. We wanna know what extracurricular activities that are you doing? I heard some are saying that they play track, someone likes to build video games, and someone football. That's like what they wanna see. They already know that you guys are in high school, so essentially you wouldn't have that much professional experience. And then as well, error free. Error free means utilize your resources. Obviously, every computer down has um, a quick spell check. You have me. So, like I said, today is the opportunity. You have me now to ensure that your resume is error free. You know, if you're done your resume, you start building it and you say, I don't know if this is right, send it over to me. You know, use Shamar and ask questions to him. Um, utilize your resources because you don't want your resume to get into it, the hands of an employer. <laughs> Or even a coach, they may even want to look at your resume someday. Um, and you don't want it to have error, because then it kind of say, wow, you know, you didn't utilize the resources. It's spell check out here, and I know you have like some mentors that could have oversaw this work for you before it got to me. So you don't want to mess up that first impression. 
So these are um, three standard resume formats, and we'll go into detail um, what each of them are and what, what they will look like and what are the functions of them. So I want to say one is the chronological resume, um, as well as the functional slash skills-based resume, and then we have a combination resume. So first, I wanted to start off with the chronological resume. Um, this is the most commonly used format. I want to say of all the resumes I've done, this is one that I would say I use the most. Um, on the right-hand side, as we began to review some of the bullet points on the uh, on this slide, this is my actual resume that I did uh, for someone maybe like a year or two ago. Um, this was a very awesome resume in which obviously you can see he had a lot to bring to the table. Just looking at his years, he had over 10 plus years of experience um, that he needed to incorporate, that we needed to incorporate on his resume. In addition to all of his skills and everything, he was a certified financial planner, um, which is something obviously you guys being in high school, well, what is that? I don't know. You know, so that will determine what Tarif can bring to the table versus the Ashley. Um, you know, the chronological resume, and we will go through this, won't, won't be the best fit for you when you're building your resume, but we'll go into what, what would be essentially um, the resume you guys would need to build. Um, because right now in the uh, state of your career or your life, the chronological is not where you are. You don't have that 13 plus years of experience that you need to outline our resume. Um, but he does. So, you know, you guys or employers will have various amount of resumes in which everyone won't come from the same walks of life. And that's how we said in the video, um, you know, everyone will be bringing different skills and expertise to the table. But the job is to outline what makes you special. Um, some employers may say, I don't care that he's a cert certified financial planner or, you know, he was a advisor for 10 years or you know, it's all about your expertise, what you can bring to the table. So the resume, this resume type um, focuses on the work experience, listing your current job first and going back in time, timely um, chronologically. This resume highlights steady employment. Obviously, we can see he had no employment gaps. And what I mean by that is, you know, March 27th is where he ended his client relationship administrator um, position. And then soon after, he begin as a financial associate April of 2007. Soon after, he began as a financial advisor. This resume highlights steady employment. So that's what I'm just focusing on here, what I just reiterated. Um, this type of resume affords you with the opportunity to give pride to your most recent and outstanding talents, skills, and expertise. Um, Expertise meaning if we can take a look, focus our attention to the core strengths, that's kind of like his expertise, strong communication skills, wealth management, financial planning. These are, in addition to everything he's done in his field within the financial advisor, within the financial associate, these are his strengths, trainer, mentor, strong financial analysis. These are his strengths. So with you guys being in high school, obviously these strengths won't be aligned with what you do, but you guys play sports. So then that will bring your strength as maybe you're team oriented. You are a team player and employee, employers like to see that. You probably have strong communication skills, whether it's you discussing information back and forth with your teammates or your coaches or even Jamar, your mentors. You know, that communication is the bridge that, you know, show what your strengths are. Um, we just did a, a round of introductions. You guys also, you know, spoke loud, clear. Um, there was no bad information given um, about that. So this resume is useful when you have consistent work history with growth and achievements. There's no gaps in your employment and looking to stand in the same field. So the other type of resume that we discussed was the functional or skills-based resume. So I want to say this resume would be um, helpful for anyone who's entering into new fields. So with that being said, you guys, 
you're entering into, whether it's the work field or just building a new resume um, as a high schooler, having not that much um, experience in the professional level, this would be kind of like that entry level resume that you guys would begin to build. This resume concentrates on general and specialized skills and abilities rather than length, descriptions, or individual jobs. Um, so again, you guys don't have that much to bring to the table lengthwise, but you can focus on some of your skills um, throughout this um, resume. How, this highlights major abilities in order of importance to this particular job or employer. Um, this resume can hide gaps. Um, job candidates who are entering, like I said, into new fields or have experience unrelated to their career goals might want to choose this format. So this is useful when there are gaps in your employment, a variety of different jobs, or changing careers or re-entering the job market. Uh, and then I guess just to... Um, focus on why there would be gaps in someone's career. Obviously, look at the time frame in which we're in throughout our life. We're going through um, an unforeseen pandemic, um, COVID. A lot of people, and you may know some that's close in your family who have been unemployed um, due to this um, unforeseen um, pandemic in the world today. A lot of people have been terminated, laid off, or seeking unemployment right now, compensation due to um, COVID. So obviously when they're adjusting or building their resume, they will have gaps, they will have gaps. It's not likely to know when their next job will be given the state um, that we're in. So this type of resume may be adjusted for people like that as well. And then for you guys, if you're doing volunteership and, you know, you volunteered two years ago and you didn't have anything last summer going on, there's obviously a, a, um, a bridge in between, you know, the timeline in which you have work history or professional history. So this functional resume will be useful for you. Okay. So. This is kind of like the last type of resume we can go through. Um, this is a combination resume. So this is also a great resume that I did for um, someone maybe a year or two ago. Um, this combines both the chronological and functional resume. This includes qualification section and may highlight some of the key strengths to capture the employer's attention. The work history section, if we want to take a look um, down in the professional experience, may emphasize results instead of job duties. This format is also suitable for job seekers who want to change careers and have worked for well-known companies. So it can also be used to showcase transferable skills and emphasize outstanding employment history. So right here, I tried to highlight, um, obviously, if you just want to take a glimpse at this resume, uh, this uh, particular person has been a teacher, obviously, for a number of years. So obviously, she came with a lot of experience, but also we're highlighting her accomplishments. The last bullet I have to the left states, the combination format will highlight the candidate's expertise and accomplishments. So here, we're literally listing out her accomplishments. And if you want to read, skim through the bullets, um, these are the results. So just to take note on one, she's designed and implemented lesson plans and increased student engagement by 20% last year. She's coordinated a 60 minute time management training workshop for 20 plus staff members on how to achieve optimal levels of personal performance and accomplishments. She was recognized for efficient teaching skills, passionate instruction, and above and beyond commitment to maximizing daily learning outcomes and student success. Again, the, this is a combination resume. It's going to list her most recent employment, and then also it's going to list prior to her most um, recent position. Did someone have something? I don't have my screen up, so I can't see who's talking. Does someone have anything um, input? No. Okay. Thank you for the feedback. Thank you. So obviously you want to know, Wow, those are the type of resumes. Where do I start? Where do I begin? What's next? Um, 
you know, after today, we want to encourage you guys to start building upon your own resume. So with that being said, you got to have a checklist. You got to know where to start, what to include, what not to include in a guide. When you're doing papers in school, you need to know what you're writing about, you know, what the body of your paper is going to be about, what's going to be the ending summary, how you're going to end the, the uh, paper so that, you know, your teacher says, wow you know, you summarize that really well, or you incorporated everything that I was looking for, whether you're, you know, writing a paper regarding a book or just writing a paper regarding yourself, you want to make sure you have some type of format, um, established format so that you're not missing any key um, inputs. So with that, that being said, the resume checklist, you need to have a heading, you need to have an objective. You need to have the summary of qualifications, your professional work experience, your education, and just some other, um, we'll go through the other, but anything in addition. So other meaning, you know, whether it's certain awards you got, medals, if you guys helped being a football player, if you helped your school um, go to the championship, or I don't know if you guys have states out there in California, that's kind of like the, um, the top level of, um, yeah. So, you know, those would be the other, the other section. Cause in addition to what you already have implemented and said and brought to the table, what other things you, you can highlight, you know, everyone doesn't go to States. Everyone can't make it there. So if that's like something that, that kind of singles you out from the next person. So as we, as we talked about the heading, I'm going to go through each one to tell you what's included, what's not included, um, and what, what other things that we should be considering. So with the heading, um, I want to state that this is kind of like your first business card. This is, you would include your name, your address, your email address, your phone number, and your social media. So when I say social media, um, It'll be LinkedIn, and if you guys don't know what a LinkedIn is, I won't highlight on that today, um, but just do some research. Just kind of check it out, see what LinkedIn is. It is a professional um, application in which you can directly talk with employers, um, seek employment as well, or just look at the different uh, professional level um, posts that people are putting, whether it's coming from a person, a single person or a employment or a company. Um, LinkedIn is a tool that you will become more familiar with as you um, get older or as you become uh, more successful in your career. Also, when we talk about heading, we don't want to use abbreviations. And what I mean by abbreviations, you know, my name is Ashley. Some people may call me Ash, but I won't put that on a resume. I would put Ashley. So you guys don't want to put any nicknames on your um, resume or what they may call you or what you're better known as. We want to know what your, per se, your government name is. Also, um, when you're inputting your phone numbers, and I know this will be geared to different um, people, but for someone, I think someone stated, and I don't have the name out right, he's in the eighth grade. You may not have a cell phone, you may or may not, but if you don't, and if you're, you know, someday you would have to get one, um, you want to have that professional level of communication. So if you don't have a cell phone, but you're creating this resume after today's workshop, you need to put some type of content information down. So whether you're utilizing your home-based phone or, you know, someone else's cell phone number so that someone can contact you, you want to have that professionalism and, you know, whether it's setting up a voicemail so that people can reach you um, entirely to call back on or, you know, hey, mom, I got this job or this internship calling me. Um, I filled out for something. Could you just make sure that you're being professional when you answer the phone going forward? Um, and then also to last state, you want to have an appropriate email address. I know some of you guys may have like some type of game oriented or not professional. When I say I'm just trying to think of a good example. So my name is Ashley and I might have Ash Money. <laughs> and that's just something to throw out there. So ashmoney at gmail.com. When an employer looks at that, they're not saying, hmm. I mean, they, they won't judge you on your email address, but you want to just be professional. If you can put 
Ashley Fuller, which is something geared to your last name, which is mine, um, or maybe your middle name, Ashley Nicole in, um, in my area. That may be maybe more suitable email address than the Ash money. Though you may have money, it's just not a, a great first impression to have like something that's not in professional. So the objective, we talked about, you know, the heading. So then we go to the objective, which is the next step of the resume. Um, an objective is a brief statement that tells the employer what a specific position you are applying for. It directly reflects the position um, you want to apply for. This should be concise and direct. Experienced candidates may put in like how we saw that first reg resume, the tarif. It, he's experienced. We all know that. He had 13 plus years of experience. So his objective will be very different than you guys' objective. So an example of an experienced candidate objective would be to leverage my five plus years of, of client face experience, public speaking skills and expertise in healthcare industry into a public relations role. So this is saying what specific position they, they want to acquire. Um, and then this is just stating with Happy Tree Educational Animations. That's the company's name. Somebody who's less experienced may uh, adjust their uh, objectives to something more down the lines of hardworking high school graduate with proven leadership and organizational skills, seeking to apply my abilities to the position of a junior assistant, and I'm just saying at LaSalle University. So junior assistant, obviously we know that's kind of more of a, hmm, that's maybe an entry level, more entry level than um, something like down the managerial role or the supervisor role. Um, some other key objectives that you may say, um, examples, you can say responsible and reliable. That's not saying leverage, leveraging my five plus years of experience, but you guys are high school students. You're responsible, I'm sure. You're reliable. You get up on time for class and for school. That's reliable. That's responsible. You're showing up every day. You guys showed up today. You know, it's 10 a.m. It was 10 a.m. on your sign. You still got up. You still put your best foot forward. That's saying you're responsible. Um, so responsible and reliable high school senior or junior or freshman in some cases seeking a cashier position. So obviously a lot of your jobs may be entry level going forward. You may have to start off at a cashier position. And these are just examples. Examples: Cashier position at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffle. And that's just something I came up with. Um, having little to no work experience shouldn't deter you from making strong objectives. You want to use this section to help highlight the skills that you make unique. Um, like I said, there's plenty of competition for jobs for high school st students. So you want to make sure you stand out from the crowd. Summary of qualifications. If you take your um, focus to the right section um, of the PowerPoint, you'll see different three different types of summary of qualifications. At the top, it's core competencies. These are your core strengths in a nutshell. Excellent communication skills. You guys all spoke and introduced yourself. You communicated well. Why not? This is something you can put on your resume. Excellent communication skill. Um, in addition to not having that much experience, another strong thing you can put on your um, resume would be strong organization skills. You know, playing sports, having the opportunity to go to school, and any other extracurricular things that you are involved with. You got to have some type of organization. You got to have some type of schedule so that you are on time for practice. You are on time for our 10 a.m. Um, resume building workshop. So that would be a qualification that you guys can input on your resume, though not having that much experience. You're a quick learner. You know, if Jamar taught you the basics of a football skill, could you pick it up easy? Yeah, because you want to get in the game. You want to put your best foot forward um, to practice, to play, to show what you can and how you can outperform another team, another candidate, working hard. I'm sure you guys all work hard at whatever you are passionate about. 
and team oriented. I think, you know, all coming from different walks of life, we can all agree that anyone who plays sports or, you know, is involved in whatever extracurricular activity, you are, are team oriented. So the summary of qualifications make you the best candidate for, for any job. The qualifications, they list qualifications, skills, abilities, years of experience, work ethic, highlights, accomplishments. This section must reflect what is required in the job description. This summary acts as an introduction and directs attention to your top qualifications for the job. Uh, so I would also focus on uh, my next bullet point. These are some key words that that ATS tracking system that I said early on in the slideshow. Um, this would help or be a disadvantage by this section right here. That ATS tracking system, and again, we will talk about that um, in the upcoming slides, but you want to make sure that you put a good analysis on this section, that you're adding your top level skills, you're adding the most important features of yourself um, and assets that you bring to the table. So this goes into the professional experience. So this, I want to say, if you're doing in a paper, to compare, this is the body of your resume, the professional experience. This is some requirements that you need for this section um, would be the name of the company, the position, whether it's, you know, if you're listing your high school and if you're a running back, it would be your title as a running back. Or if you play track, you know, whatever title that has significance within um, the experience you're listing, this would be needed for this section. And then the dates of employment. So if we gear our attention to the right side of it, Holy Redeemer Hospital, that's the name of the company. Meadowbrook PA, that's the location of the company. Though I don't have location as a requirement, if you look down to the left side, it is an extra component you can add to your resume. Because this builds the bridge to say to an employer, where is he coming from? Like, where, what part of the city or So July 2019 to present, that's the time frame in which you, he worked there. So obviously this is showing um, as a current employment experience. So, you know, this is showing from July 2019 is when you start it to present. Long-term care nurse, that's the current title of the position at Meadowbrook, at Holy Redeemer, I'm sorry. And then if we look at the bullet points below that, that's just saying some of the typical day-to-day -day job functions in which um, this person does. So deliver comprehensive geriatric nursing care to up to 20 plus patients. Daily requiring long-term care assistance, ensuring 100% effective patient care delivery and achievement of desired patient outcomes. So on a day-to-day -day basis, this is saying, wow, this person delivers comprehensive. So it's not easy. It's comprehensive. Geriatric is just stating the type of people. It's like an older adult because um, it's at a nursing care facility. So when you think of nursing care, who's receiving nursing care? Kind of like our grandparents or so to 20 plus patients daily. So, guys, when you are putting together your resume, um, these are some of the things you want to input. Like, give a number. How many, how many students are you working with? Or how many? What's your level? Is it comprehensive? Is it easy? And then ensuring 100% effective patient care. That means you are doing, putting your best foot forward every day to ensure 100% effective patient care. So some of the extra things you can incorporate, and I'm just going to speed through. I know we're like pressed for time. And Jamar, feel free to jump in and say, Ashley, you need to stop this or whatever. Um, just let me know, and I'll speed through. If we need to skip a few slides, we'll go through that as well. Um, some of the extra things that we can list on a resume is the city and state or specific responsibilities, as well as description of accomplishments. So your education, obviously this is self-explanatory. Um, this is one we can speed through. Your education is self-explanatory. What school do you go to? What's your major? So right now, 
obviously a major is more for the college level recipients. So you won't have a major, uh, but you'll have diploma for yours, the location. Where are you obtaining your high school diploma? That's significant to um, input. Whether you're in college, we have someone going to college. You will put, put the degree that you're pursuing on your resume. And then the year of uh, graduation. So this person, if you want to direct your attention to um, the picture, this person attends Drury University. It's located in Philadelphia, PA. Um, he is pursuing a Master of Business Administration with a concentration in Health Services Administration. He started this um, program January 2020 into present. So he just started. So typically, um, a master's program is uh, maybe two years. So he's expected to graduate within the realm of 2022, 2023, if um, who knows, with COVID, it may be an extra year that he would have to sit for his master's. So we talked about that other. We talked about, you know, if you're playing football, you want to highlight that you you helped your team go to states. Um, so these are some of other components that you would have to, you would, can add to your resume to make you stand out from the crowd. You can add whatever activities that you're involved in, whatever honors you've received, any certifications, achievements, awards, licenses. Obviously, that the resume that we looked, the first resume that we looked at, he was a financial planner. So that'll be a certain license that he would put on his, his resume to highlight his um, additional experience. And any professional affiliations, if you guys are, you know, evolve, involved with, just trying to think, Jamar, you know, NFL, that would be his professional affiliation. So again, just highlighting, um, we're coming on some of our last few slides, guys. What is that ATS um, system that I've been speaking on, but not really going into in depth what it is? It is an applicant tracking system and it acts as an electronic gatekeeper for an employer. The ATS um, parses a resume content into categories and then scans it into specific keywords to determine if the job application should be passed along to the recruiter or not. The main goal of the ATS system um, is to make life easier for a recruiter. So when I said earlier that, you know, jobs are taking only, an employer is taking only six seconds to review a resume. You know, some people are, they have 50 to 100 resumes to scan just so they can hire one or two candidates. So they use this ATS tracking system as, you think of it as a cost-saving analysis and a time-saving analysis. Because the employer essentially, by using this tool, they don't have to go through all 100 resumes. They'll use this system and it literally will feed your resume through based on whatever keywords you're listing in your qualification section um, that makes you the best fit for whatever job you're applying for. So some of the resume don'ts um, that I wanted to highlight when you're putting together your resume um, that you should not include, and we can go through it if you have any more questions regarding any more, um, but these are some of the top ones that I would consider do not, um, put on your resume. So do not list the interests and hobbies unless directly uh, related to the position. Do not use personal pronouns, I, me, my, in your resume. Don't include reasons for leaving a previous job. In this case, you guys don't need to put that, you're in high school. Uh, don't forget spell check. Again, when I say that utilize your resources, whether you have you have need to oversee your resume when you're done putting together or if you want to pass it through jamar or just doing a quick spell check on your own on your phone you know conduct that spell check that's needed um and don't go over two pages obviously being in high school you guys don't have that much to incorporate on your resume because it will be essentially entry level so you don't have to consider you know going over two pages um do not list any church affiliations political affili affiliations ethnicity race place of birth, health, et cetera. Um, you just don't have to include that. It's not needed for a resume. Um, and once you start applying to some jobs, they will ask you, well, what is your race? You can include it on the application, but it's definitely not needed in the resume. And then obviously the most important factor today is don't ever rely on your resume. Um, with technology that is available today, employers can easily check your background. You know, everything is on the internet. It's an easy tool to find out whatever information you want. 
just don't lie. It, it'll help you along the way if you're just 100% honest going forward. Um, so resume layout and appearance, these are just some quick key factors that you should consider when doing your resume. Um, it should be visually appealing. Uh, white or white off paper um, when you're printing your resume. Um, the font should be 12, but no smaller than 10. Obviously for you guys, your, your resume will be one page. And be consistent with the layout, underlying, underlining, capitalizing, bold, just be consistent. Whatever you do, it, it may not be right or wrong, and I can tell you if you wanna have me review it, but just be consistent. Don't underline something in one section and then don't underline it in the other. Just be consistent. Use good margins and tables. Obviously, you know, when you guys do papers in school, I'm sure they have um, made you become familiar with the different margins, um, tabs, and bullets. Uh, and spell check and grammar. I can't um, focus on that enough. Like, you know, in high school, mistakes are made. Mistakes are made throughout your entire life. Just utilize your resources. So this concludes what I have for my presentation today. Um, if you guys need further resume advice, assistance, like I told you in the beginning, I'm here as a resource. Um, I said email us and schedule a private consultation for a resume critique. This is my personal email address. Um, when you guys are building your resume after today's session, please email me. I'm here. I'll be waiting for responses and feedback from you guys. You know, please just state your name. Let me know that you guys are coming from Jamar's um, workshop and we'll go from there. Um, but also remember, a good resume gets you the interview. So you want to um, spend time on it. It's not going to be a quick turnaround, maybe a day or two, because you don't have the experience. So it may take you a week just to build on different things and consider what should I highlight or what shouldn't I highlight. And I mean, all I can say is good luck.